Uh, last night, I I read part of uh, an alleged diary by a U.S. Navy admiral named Richard Byrd um, describing how he was flying over the North Pole in 1947 when he passed over a mountain range and then saw like a big green valley with woolly mammoths. His plane was then approached by two UFOs with like some sort of swastikas or something on it that caused it to land and some blind Nordic types of men brought him to like some kind of crystal city and gave him a message to bring back to the government about the danger of atomic energy. Um, so like some people, of course, think that the diary is a fake since it wasn't published until after he died. But I'm just curious, do you know anything about who this person is or this event? You're referring to the bird person, the admiral. If like what you're asking was the idea of who this person is. It's obviously a real person that lived and had certain experiences with various higher civilizations. Yes? Yeah, basically my question is like, do you know if this diary about him visiting this inner <laughs> earth like is yes. true? So it did really exist. This happened? This person traveled various times through <clears throat> entrances what you calling inside of your planet or so-called in the Earth or Garta or whatever, yes? But he was certainly not the first and obviously not the last person to venture there. It's not that uncommon mentioned previously, the Jules Verne person, correct? Correct. One example, simply someone in your more modern times to venture there. We cannot directly probe with this particular piece of diaries, correct or incorrect, but what's correct is this person really traveled there. They obviously tried to return later on to the South Pole, but were not given entrance. Also, due to diplomatic affiliation with members from the Western region that have traveled there and found what you're considering refuge, yes? Uh-huh. Like, before you had mentioned that there are entrances at the poles, like, do you mean like there's some sort of, like, physical hole at the North Pole, or is it more like a... The idea, like, when you get to a certain area, like, you sort of just teleport into these these inner Earth areas. It might appear as teleportation to some that are not aware of the energy or how it works. But yes, there are various entrances all over your planet that are quite physical. Maybe not like some imagine, but there are physical entrances. There are also hollow regions in the poles, yes. Hold out caverns quite physically, They're just as physical as where you're currently seated, where you can quite physically travel just as you're going to your local bus stop. But they are not necessarily inside the planet, they are just not much beneath the crust. They are quite on the surface, just underground. But maybe just a few hundred meters. Okay, speaking of that, um, like our current scientific understanding of the way the earth is is that like there's only a rocky crust like maybe 20 or 30 <laughs> miles deep and then like the rest of that is like liquid magma all the way to like the solid inner core so like if, if there are these inner earth areas like you had mentioned last time that like they're near the core of the earth like is our understanding that the earth is liquid like just below the surface like is that wrong or what <clears throat> Depends correctly what the reality you're in. There are some that are believing it's flat, correct? <laughs> yes. Yes, there are very interpretation of your current model. However, the current reality that you're asking from, yes, it's quite hollow in the idea of there being caverns. Doesn't necessarily mean it's entirely hollowed out, like for example, your moon. The moon is hollowed out? <laughs> yes. Well, it's not really your moon as you're calling such, but the moon that you're considering yours as it's circling your planet. Wow, <laughs> that's a total mind blower, Alaska. <laughs> uh, yes, there are quite some of your planet that are very well aware of this. They are just sharing the information. Who is inside of it, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> Various races, including us. Even some from your very own planet. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. It's very similar in the radio of Antarctica. That there are many different species and races that are on diplomatic neutral ground. Uh, can you say roughly how many of the larger major caverns uh, 
that are populated by interterrestrials there are inside of Earth? <laughs> Likely billions. Billions? Millions? Likely millions, yes. But it depends what you consider a cavern, what you consider a, a, trash, a, a corridor terms in the large system. That's correct, it's one large system. Yeah, large are caverns. How big is a cavern? And when it's just a small entrance point, etc. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, like the, the bigger ones that you could fit skyscrapers in. Like, is there just one big one of those, or are there several other, like several different large ones? There are various ones that are that big. Yes. Okay. Um. What continent or ocean is Agartha beneath? Thousands, as far as we're believing, for of caverns. And when you're asking about Agartha, yes. Uh huh. <clears throat> then why would we be under the Arctic continent on the inside? Okay. Oh. But it also stretched all the way to Asia. Oh wow. Uh... Again, it depends on your definition of how far you would call it such a continent where it would throw the line. How far beneath the surface is Agartha? A few thousand kilometers. See, like, that really confuses me. Um, uh, previously, like, I had asked you if the Earth is really, if the inside of the Earth is really just liquid molten, like we believe. And you said <laughs> it kind of depends on what reality you're in. So, like, the, right. the reality that I'm in now, like, is the Earth really solid, like, thousands of kilometers deep? <laughs> It always depends also on your current frequencies, your current vibrations, is what you're actually getting to, yes. From where we are asking, there are thousands of kilometers of depths of the Earth, yes. Between, for example, Agartha and Shabara, if you're asking about those continents, yes. But obviously, there's also some connection between them, so it depends on which point you would drill down, yes. Right, right. So is Agartha the one where the dinosaurs exist? There are numerous, but you could score such for simplicity's sake, yes. Okay, so the dinosaurs exist in several of the large caves? Again, depends on user of dinosaurs, but some of the beings that you've turned such on the surface exist there, yes, reptilian beings. Right, okay. Um... Is there a civilization of humans that live side by side with the dinosaurs in Agartha? <sighs> Again, depending on the definition of dinosaur. Yes, some of the reptiles they lived with humans, yes. Some that are more advanced, perhaps, yes, of reptilian nature. They are similar evolutionary state. They're more first secluded, but still they might come in conflict sometimes with what you a human population. Right, right. Um are there any plesiosaurs in Agartha or any other caverns? In larger bodies, yes, where there's also something like water caverns. So what's, what cavern do the plesiosaurs live in? Is it Agartha or Shangri-La? Very general terms you're using for larger land masses, yes, or caverns where they're located in, yes? Right. So some here, some there, yes. Okay, um, do you know if there's a name for the cave where the descendants of the blue race from Atlantis live today? Not very aware of. Uh, do you know what continent or ocean uh, this cave is below? Likely under the Atlantic somewhere. Okay. Likely. It's not like we're down there, what you consider frequently, or we interact with there as monkeys there. Right, right. Um... Stretching further, likely in the European area, southwestern around there, but obviously much further down. Okay. Do you have any idea roughly what the population of the blue race is? I mean, is it in the thousands or millions or billions? 
voor een buurwerf een beetje. Strom voor buurwerf. Okay. Down there, dat zal de meiden wel zo wensen voor een space. Right, right. Now, I know that the, um, the cave near the North Pole that Richard Bird visited had, like, he described it as large buildings made out of crystals. Is this kind of common for most of the, the caves that are populated by humans? Not necessarily. A rule, but it's common, yes. Right, right. Um, okay, uh, well, another question, um, so a lot of people believe that there is, like, a big cave beneath the pyramids of Giza, do you know if that's true? What's big? There's a cave, yes. An entrance, yes. So is it kind of like a, a giant place, kind of like Agartha, or is it just a few little caves and, like, a few little tunnel systems? There are sandwiches that go far down on the ground. So there are smaller sandwiches, and from there on you can go further. That might even reach inside the earth. But we're not aware that it's open, that is what the report is likely at your governments of various functions have put some guards there, yes? Right, right. Also in affiliation with certain extraterrestrial groups and races. Right. Um, to go back to the topic of interterrestrials or intraterrestrials or whatever, uh, can you tell me what the purpose is of main maintaining the population of so-called cavemen or primitive humans? What are you considering maintaining the population? Well, I mean, I know there are, you know, there are some population of so-called cavemen underground. I mean, what's the point of keeping them there? I mean, since they... They're extinct on the surface. It's not like they're coming back to the surface. Like, what's the point of keeping them underground? Who is keeping them underground? Uh, I don't know. Are they? They're simply lives there, yes. So is there any ET group that's kind of overseeing them, or are they just left there on their own? We're aware that someone left on their own, similar to some tribes in Amazonas, which are largely shovels. So, Most people in the universe are much higher involved than you are. Uh, so who put these cavemen down there originally, and why? They are certainly less there from the cataclysm. They fled, some of them survived. Just like the dinosaurs that were... <sighs> yeah, we, we don't need to go into that. You're aware, yes. Yeah. Um, so you, are you saying, like, at the end of the Cretaceous period, they just kind of want, wandered underground themselves? Yes, the, 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 the light didn't want that they slept. Okay. Cool. Um, roughly how many of them are down there today? A few hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, do you know which continent or ocean they're below? We, we're aware that they're somewhat spread, but we're not quite sure which now is there. Okay. Are there any artificial suns inside the Earth? Something like a sort of an artificial sun, yes. But it's not as big as the real sun, it's not as cleaving hot or etc. It's simply simulating a sunlight idea in some camera. So is there just one or are there multiple? We believe there are multiple. Hmm, interesting. Um... Are there any large voids where the walls and ceilings are made up of giant crystals, like in many of our science fiction depictions? Yes. Some of them are alive, some of them are also keeping the walls lit. Cool. Uh, are there any giant squids in our oceans, like the so-called Kraken, which is said to be as big as a large ship? There are such beings, yes, in your oceans. Many of them exist closer to the ocean floor, however. Uh, do mermaids really exist, either on Earth or in, or any other planet? At least they did in your so-called ancient past. But think right around the time before the continent sank. So, like, how did we're, they... We believe there are still some left, yes, there exist. 
How did they come into being? Were they just genetically manipulated by the Atlanteans? Yes. By the Anunnaki. So are there any that exist now on other planets too? Possible if they brought them there or conducted similar trade experiments there or they're necessarily related. So how do they how do they breathe underwater? Do they have gills or something? For the earth, yes. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> cool. Similar to fish. Okay. Um are there any plesiosaurs that live in our oceans and lakes, such as the so called Loch Ness monster? In oceans, yes, lakes are likely. Not like the Loch Ness monster. There might have been out of such a being in such a lake at some point. Uh Okay. Uh so so like Loch Ness in Scotland, do you know if there was if there's ever been an actual place you saw that wandered in there and people witnessed? Very likely, yes. Okay. We don't think it's still there though. Alright, uh cool. Is Shambhala the cavern that the entrance in Tibet leads to? <sighs> Correct, her. That's the city. Yeah, um, the way I understand it, the city is, at least from the way we consider it, we have the name Kalapa for the city, and Shambhala is sort of like the cavern itself, at least the way I understand it. But um, in, anyway, is the city itself populated today, or is it just a deserted ruin? There are many cities down there, Yes. From where we are of the Shambhala also refers to the city itself, or <sighs> there are uncertainly people living there, but most people that lived there earlier have moved much further down. But there are certainly many still there, and there is quite a fluctuation from people from the Tibetan region going down there and upwards. Many what you consider monks, for example, travel quite regularly down to what you consider Shambhala. Okay, um... So do you know and what... sometimes people come up from down there to Lhasa. To what? Some visit Lhasa. What is that word? Lhasa. Uh, can you spell it? L-H-A-S-A, -A, we believe. So is that like an underground cavern? That's a city from Guramara on the surface. Okay. Okay. Um, so, can you describe what the buildings in Shambhala look like and how tall they are? <laughs> They're sometimes built in the structure of the Earth itself. So, they are built out of the Earth's structure. A certain suburb, what you consider a city like in your South American region, yes, or Mesoamerican. There are some construction sites there that are similar. Okay. That are built in the mountain, out of the mountain. We're currently scaring anything that might be down there. Many of it's sandy structure. Again, Shambhala referring to larger cave patterns as you reference it, yes? Right. Um, so are there any snow-covered mountains down there the way, it's, the way we believe? <sighs> or forests? <sighs> there are certainly mountain regions, yes. Uh -huh. Depending on the temperature, likely, that might be changing if they're snowy or not. From there, larger caverns lead further down. Depends where you throw the line. The landscape is rather varied. Right. It is also a connection to the Gobi Desert underground. Okay. Um, so, so it's quite fast stretching. Right. So we believe that, like, one of the cities down there named Kalapa is shaped like um, a lotus flower with eight sides when you're looking at it from above, 
Do you know if there are any cities down there shaped like this? Possible, not we are currently aware of such a structure. Okay. But it's not unlikely for a particular civilization that builds structures in this fashion that might look like such. So, However, they are likely older if there were such notes still left currently. There was a certain civilization that exists in there that was also visited by some surface dwellers some particular time that might have brought some of the stories up later. So how old are these cities down in the Shambhala cave and who built them? <sighs> Approximately a few hundred thousand years. Likely many of them were built by original settlers on Earth that constructed certain experiments, but much of those that are currently accessible to Europe people on the, on the, on the floor, yes, on the surface are just a few 10,000 years old. They were likely built during the Atlantean period and were colonies from those. Okay. Uh, now, I know the Nazis ventured into the Tibet entrance in the 1930s, but do you know if they were successful in actually reaching the caves <sighs> down there? They had contact, but mostly through the aforementioned monks. Okay. They collaborated with certain monks at the particular time, but their main interest was getting information about other structures in Antarctica. There was also, when there was a certain push and pull, so to speak, between certain members of the Federation and us in terms of getting control over this particular social political experiment on your planet that then later turned to a space program. Okay, so they didn't make it all the way down to the caves, they just talked to some of the monks on the surface? They went down there with the monks, at least some of them, yes. Okay. So did they find anything of significance, like information about Antarctica or whatever? Yes, they met with certain people down there from the inner civilization that gave them information. Okay. Cool. Um, now you there was also a certain entrance in Antarctica that then they were to use later on. Some of this, however, goes on in their actually politics due to the part that was given to them by us in the Antarctic region based on an agreement they made down there with the Earth people at this particular point. That's all we can share about that. Right, I understand. Um, you said before that there are at least some areas where the Earth is solid for thousands of kilometers beneath the, thir the surface. Is it like this everywhere, meaning solid for thousands of kilometers beneath the, thir the surface? Or are there some locations <laughs> where it's only solid for a few kilometers beneath the, the surface? In some places, it's only a few hundred meters because they're cavern systems. Some of them modern, built by your own government, yes. Uh -huh. Some of the Euro European region has been under tunneled during your last big war. Your American region has been under tunneled after that. The Russians have under tunneled the last part of Siberia. And Southern and American regions, Mesoamerican regions, have been under tunneled for a long time, but that's much further down. And there are currents con connecting pretty much all continents, particularly African continents, under tunneled for a large degree, probably in the early stages during the Anunnaki rule. Right. What I'm kind of asking, though, is like, are there any areas beneath the, th the surface where, you know, there's liquid molten magma, you know, not that far beneath the surface? That tends to be further down. However, artificially, there has been some readjustments of certain substances, and like the way you're changing the flow of rivers, yes, on the surface. Right. The flow of lava has been changed, but not the way that it's traveling all the way up to the surface. Otherwise, there would be nothing like a volcanic eruption. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Like, if the crust of the Earth is really thousands of kilometers deep, then, like, how is it possible for us to have earthquakes and, you know, continental drift and volcanoes and so on? So are these, are there certain regions, like, along fault lines where it's not that deep? The solid crust? Where the plates are connected, yes. Okay. Um, okay, so is there anything interesting at the exact center of Earth, or is it really just a metal core? 
it is our core, yes. We want to call the metal core, it's hot. Magma, well, yes. Uh-huh. What Interesting that? enough, of course, it's also a magnetic <clears throat> structure, yes. What material is it made of? Is it metal or just rock? <clears throat> like the numerous substances, metal is certainly a large part of it. Okay. It's, of course, m- melted, yes. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, so you had mentioned that open contact with intraterrestrials could be possible in our not-too-distant future. Do you think this is more likely to happen before open contact with extraterrestrials or after or what? <sighs> that depends greatly on them and on which it is our right to step forward. Certainly going to happen before contact with beings such as us is open. If it's going to happen anytime soon at all. Or like your first contact is going to be with other heroes magnets. Will that be from other planets? Or from down there? Like your first contact is likely going to be with some of your space program fleets. Yes? Okay. So people from your so-called secret space programs that might become less secret then. Right. What you might consider a person false flag event or yes when I'm being presented something they're not or there's just some information we filter through etc etc and then after that there might be more likely a contact with people from inside your planet that might also be presented as extraterrestrial or vice versa so just because people are being introduced to your planet one way or the other doesn't mean that they are exactly as what they're being introduced as right and to refer back to your request you want to add the right here that when there is certain magma or terrain further to the surface becoming lava, etc., it is likely in the regions where the Earth's crust is not like thick, and that's then the very effect of such, yes? Right, right. To clear out any misunderstandings there. Right, I got you. So we had discussed the possibility of reintroducing so-called dinosaurs to the surface if they were terraformed. But would it be possible to reintroduce the woolly mammoths and cavemen to the surface without it having to be terraformed? Yes, that's likely possible. Some of them still exist on the ground, they would just have to come up, so to speak. Cool. Certain regions, Siberia or Alaska, might be somewhat suitable. Or Canada, for that matter. Cool, cool. I'm looking for Greenland. Yes. <laughs> Like, you had mentioned before that there was some kind of capital or biggest city in the inner Earth that you compare it to New York City. Can you describe it in more detail, like, what its culture is like and what it looks like? Well, certainly it exists in your current time frame and we're having some problems coming down the west now the right here, switching over to the topic. <sighs> It is possible that it currently still exists. It was likely located what you would call a gas hub. Um, okay, so I mean, are you saying that it existed in our past? You do call it past, yes. Okay. Uh, um, can you describe what it looked like or if it still exists and what it looks like today? I mean, like, does it have buildings kind of like New York City? Like tall skyscrapers? Not quite as tall. It might look similar in terms of uh, skyline, whatever. There is no skyline. You get the idea. Yeah. Uh, do you know if there are any pyramids in the city? Yes. Okay. Um, so, like. In, they don't in... look like any of those that are currently on your surface order. Okay. So in this city and, like, in the inner Earth areas in general, I mean, it seems like the gravity must be lighter than it is on the surface. Uh, Is that correct? Yes. Somewhat. I mean, like, they don't... Like, on the moon, for example, I know that they have artificial gravity. Like, do any cities in the inner Earth have artificial gravity? Where people live, yes. Okay. 
Um, do you know if uh, this city has has or had like a leader, like a king or a mayor? <sighs> Very possible. Somewhat of an overseer, a spiritual person, or more so than a, what you call a mayor. Okay. 